some time ago, it, I just missed it, but the Serbian congregation noticed something that popped up in our midst, brethren. So we need to address that very plainly and clearly. And we need to have some clear, hopefully, understanding or awareness, at least. We cannot really fathom how horrible the Great Tribulation will be. But we need to have awareness of how it may affect us if we make wrong choices. And we're all human, we're all fallible, and we can all make wrong choices indeed. Uh, what happened, what popped out in our conversation was that somebody said, it doesn't matter who, but somebody said that we will be having unconverted people in the place of safety, that we will be teaching them and giving them example. Brethren, this is a, a huge error. We are not going to be having unconverted people in the place of safety. Please, Revelation chapter 12, let us be very clear. We read it, I made a reference in the message today about it. But, you know, let's see again to whom are given the two wings. Revelation twelve fourteen, And to the woman. The woman is representative of the church, brethren. What is the church? The church is ecclesia. Ecclesia called out once. Those who are led by the Spirit of God, they make up Ecclesia, whoever they are, wherever they are. So to the woman, to the church, to the Ecclesia were given two wings of a great eagle, that she, the church, might fly into the wilderness, into her place, the church's place, where she, the church, is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. Brethren, the wings are given to the Ecclesia, to the church. They are not given to the unconverted people of the world, be they your children, your unconverted mates, your friends, my friends, your relatives, my relatives, the wings that will symbolically or perhaps even literally uh, drive us into the place of safety, brethren, were given to the church. And the church is comprised of converted people. Okay, so please make that distinction. There will be no unconverted people in the place of safety. It doesn't say anywhere in Revelation. However, there of course might be perhaps unconverted individuals who might go with us into the place of safety. Of course, your children, your underage children, certainly perhaps your unconverted mates, perhaps some of our friends or relatives we don't really know, so they might, because we remember with the exodus of Israel, we remember that there was a great multitude of unconverted non-Israelites who went to the place of safety. But it was in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, we find no indication of a great multitude of unconverted people. We just have indication that the church were given the uh, wings only to the church, not to the world. Now, of course, those who may be unconverted or not baptized... Uh, because baptism really is what is the first step in our conversion, those individuals might come with us. But those individuals will have to be humble enough. They'll be like strangers among Israel, living among us, completely knowing our customs based on the Bible, understanding at least some basic Bible things, and being willing to submit to the government of God, brethren. So there might be individuals, yes, indeed. But not people, just individuals. Now, of course, among those individuals will be the underage children because they are not of the age to be baptized and be, to be converted. So, therefore, we come to this point. The point is, depending on your spiritual state, brethren, depends the end of your underage children. If you turn to be Laodiceans, you will not be making it to the place of safety and your underage children will not make it to the place of safety. That's the first very important thing. Now, what might happen is, again, also, remember Lot's wife. Lot was a very humble kind of righteous man who was being tormented by day and night of what was going on in Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, brethren, his wife, she turned around. That's not the context. The context of that verse it's not that she just turned around to see, to glance at what was going on behind. She actually turned around with the intention to return to Sodom and Gomorrah. That's the point. Now, some of your mates, unconverted mates, 
some of our unconverted spouses, we don't know, may not be willing to go. Perhaps even some of your converted spouses may not be willing to go because the Laodiceans, after all, are still the Church of God, people who have the Holy Spirit. So some of your spouses may not want to go. Let's say you have an unconverted spouse that she or he doesn't want to go. What do you do? Well, it's up to you, but we here in Serbia feel the need to tell you that sometimes when we listen to all of you, uh, counting all of your wonderful blessings, that among those blessings, sometimes when we listen to you, we seem to kind of sense that you may not really understand that at one point you have to give everything up for the sake of God. In this case, it will be flight to the place of safety. Why do we feel that? Well, we feel that because all of us here had to give up so much. Brethren, all of us here in Serbia, some of us had to completely give up on our biological family, friends, on our parents, mothers and fathers, who are our biological mothers and fathers, because they were just, they were just you, we couldn't be with them in the same house. We couldn't even stay in touch with them. Why? Because they were always instigating us to break God's commandments. And they feel ashamed of us for being Bible Christians. Which meant that we had to separate from them. Because any community communion with them was impossible. We also didn't get married because we could. Oh, we could find unconverted wives. Oh, indeed. Serbia is a country known for plenty of beautiful women, by the way. But we all have been resisting it because we understand what a hell it would be to get in, 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 into marriage with an unconverted person. We have a good example from some of us, okay? And some of you, meaning Terry, I'm, I'm alluding to Terry Nelson, who has testified to us what a hell that is. We are aware of that. Even though, yes, we are young, you know, we do have hormones, we do have our needs, we do have our desires, but we have resisted it because it would lead us into hell and away from God. Now, sometimes we feel that, we understand that, especially in America, family is like a God. You know, family is like a God. But you have to understand, brethren, God has to be above our families. We had to separate from our parents because... God is above our parents. His commandments, His ways, and His what He says is above all our parents, all our friends, all of your children, all of your spouses, converted or unconverted. He has to be the first one. And it might be a great distress if some of your spouses, converted or not, may not want to leave for the place of safety, brethren. Now, nobody has ever written on this Skype chat that... None of you has ever written that he or she wants to stay behind to help out unconverted spouses. But it, it has not been written. But in my informal conversations with some of, some of our members, I've heard this notion, oh, I wonder, perhaps I should stay behind to help out my wife. Or perhaps I should stay behind to help out my wife and children. Brethren, let us be now very clear. It amazes me how much the Western world has not learned anything from the Holocaust of the Jews. But let me tell you about the nature of the coming satanic European army, which will be made up of the people of stern face whose speech you shall not understand and who will have no pity. Remember what we read in Leviticus 26. They'll have no pity about children, wives, elderly, etc., we here in Serbia, those people with stern face, with not dumb speech, have committed genocide against our people twice. We have seen them on our soil. You people in the Anglo-Saxon world have never seen a foreign troops on their soil, let alone, let alone the Germans and the Europeans. You may choose to stay behind, but you cannot help anybody out. You cannot help anyone. What will they do? First of all, they'll first of all, they'll remember this movie, Anna Frank, for example. They'll separate you from your children. 
men on one side, women on the other, children on the third side. Or, if they're being so cruel, they can do even worse. Because you stayed with your children. They might be raping your children before your eyes. Because those people have no scruples. They're satanic, brethren. And the torment would be even worse for you, you know. And I have to warn you about this. I know this is graphic. This is not pleasant. But you have to know about the nature of the coming European army. Ruthless, heartless, satanic. Commanded by Karl Theodor zu Gutenberg or whoever else will be the new Hitler. Ruthless brethren have no scrupulous, no, 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 no moral restraint. Demonic, demonized. I wish if Mr. Armstrong has preached like this, but perhaps he didn't because half of you, as he said once, do not get it. They didn't even get the plan of salvation, let alone the satanic army. But brethren, I, I feel that he would be speaking like this if he was alive now at this time. This planned European army will be demonized. Demon-possessed, satanic. You have to understand that. And they would not allow you to help out anyone or your spouse or your children. They wouldn't. In fact, they may even make you, make you suffer even more. They may rape your spouse before your eyes and your underage children. I'm speaking this from the Serbian experience. We had Hungarians who occupied northern parts of the country who raped underage, uh, underage girls before their mothers and fathers' eyes just to make their parents suffer more. That is the nature of the European army, brethren. And unless you be a Philadelphian with your underage children and go with your underage children, your underage children will remain in the Great, in the great Tribulation. As, as well as your spouses as well. Now when the time comes to flee... You cannot help anyone out. Remember that verse in the Bible. I can't, I can't now quote you exactly what it is, but I know what it says. If there were these three men, Daniel, Noah, who was the third Job. one? Job, that's right. If there was Daniel, Noah, and Job, they would save only their own lives. They would not be able to save even their children or their wives. You see, brethren, it is, we cannot save anyone. And sometimes it seems to us, that we ascribe too much value or too much power to ourselves. No, we cannot, brethren. If some of your underage children decide, in spite of your good choice, to go to the place and to stay behind, there's nothing you can do about it. And perhaps some of your children, being unconverted and being spoiled little Israelites, will need to go to the Great Tribulation to learn their lesson. As horrible as it would be, but it would be perhaps for their own salvation. You have to just, you just have to let it, be that way. Because they're not your own property, they're property of God. Now, if they want to go with you to the place of safety, of course, the underage children would. The overage children, those who are, you know, mature adults, it's, again, their choice. Everybody will get according to his works. If the works of your adult children are evil, what else can you do about it? God has to intervene in their lives and let them even perhaps go through the Great Tribulation, through all these horrible things I've been telling you about, because then, only then, they may perhaps will learn their lesson and, and, and attain their salvation. There's nothing you can do about your wives converted, unconverted, husbands converted, unconverted, children. We are all, you know, it's a personal matter and we all will get according to our works. But I have to tell you this. I have to tell you about the nature of this European army. It seems to me that we don't get it sometimes. And I have to repeat something else, brethren. That when we were being counseled for baptism, nobody ever told us that our private lives as private citizens were over. We cannot be private citizens anymore. How do you imagine that short work to be done if we are all just... Being private and unknown to the world, brethren, it's impossible. How could Bob Thiel, you know, preach and be unknown to the world and yet stir up the whole world with a short work coming up? No way. God's people have to be manifested to this world. They'll make it to the headlines and they'll be hated by all for my name's sake, says Jesus Christ. You have to be prepared for that. Oh, it won't be easy. There is no privacy for us anymore, or privacy. It's over. We are public now. 
you have to know that. And, and now that I'm counseling new people sometimes for baptism, I tell them these things because they have to be prepared psychologically and spiritually for that. It will be a horrible pressure on us. That we will be known. Just like the flight to the place of safety will not be private and little and secret. Of course not. The satanic European army will go you know, after those who are fleeing to the place of safety. It cannot be a private little secret event. It will be public. And woe to those who stay behind. Because if you read later Revelation 12, 14, you know, the serpent, you know, now is so angry. And as you know, the serpent now goes to make war. You know, the dragon and goes to make war, verse 17, with the remnant of the seed of the woman of the church, who which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Christ. Laodiceans are still converted people, but they're about to lose their salvation because their love is growing cold. It's lukewarm, it's about to go out, so God intervenes to rescue them. Perhaps some of us will be in that camp, we don't know, but again, please get some notions out of your minds that are just wrong. Notion number one, no, there will be no unconverted people in the place of safety. The place of safety is reserved for the church, ecclesia, those who are led by the Spirit of God. There might be unconverted individuals who are obedient enough and yielding to the government of God, meaning the God's law. Individuals, brethren, please mark what I said. Not people, but individuals. Perhaps our close friends, perhaps uh, even our unconverted spouses, those who might be with us, and are at least admiring admiring what God is doing through us, or at least have enough, enough respect for God and His ways. But they are individuals, not people. That's number one. Number two, we cannot help any of us in the Great Tribulation. In the Great Tribulation, the best you can hope for is to be exploited as a labor force, which Germans, Germans had several camps. They had the labor force camps. They had the concentration camps. They had the death camps. They had camps for women and children. Learn from the Jewish history, please, if you haven't yet. In When they come into your Anglo-Saxon lands, if you are still alive and you're there, you stay behind, they're just going, to, first of all, to separate you from your wives and husbands and your children. What they can do to your children is horrendous, I've just told you that. So it's upon all of you what you're doing with God and are you fervently praying to be accounted worthy to escape with your underage children. With your adult children, well, they're just responsible for themselves. For your underage children, you are responsible for them. So if you're a Philadelphian, you'll flee to the place of safety. But you staying behind to help somebody out it does not work, brethren. It does not work. God doesn't work that way. And yes, it will take us some stamina and God's help to, to endure even in the place of safety because we'll be hearing necessarily what is going on around the world and what they're doing to the Anglo-Saxon people, brethren. We will. And sometimes I wonder, those two witnesses, as they'll be tormenting the whole world, what they will be tormenting the world with. Well, I'm wondering, perhaps they'll just, you know, all of a sudden appear and torment the world, telling the world what Karl Theodor II Gutenberg or whoever will be the new Hitler and his European satanic demonic army are doing in those camps. Of course, they'll not be broadcasting that to the, to the European and other public. But the witnesses might be there to decry them, brethren, as well. I, I keep thinking sometimes about it. But those will be horrible things. Awful things. Because the European army is, again, demonized and satanic, brethren. We read that in Leviticus 26. Remember what we read there. Go and read it again. People of stern face with no mercy for anyone who is behind. And they will even try, they will even try to kill the Philadelphia remnant that will be fleeing to the place of safety. So those are things. And then when the moment comes, who do you put first in your life even now, brethren, now? That, that, that's the last point I'm going to make and then I'll give word perhaps to others from Serbia who may want to tell you something and then that'll be the end of this recording and if you have any questions we can discuss that but who will be the first in your life even now are your spouses more important than God are your children to you more important than God see that's a trap we can all fall into because I, I we do understand that God has blessed all of you with so many things that some of us cannot even dream about now don't get offended let me tell you this thing some of you have told us how you 
from the age, very young age, you were able to work and, 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 and provide for yourself and so on. That's beautiful. That's a wonderful, wonderful blessing. But do you realize that the rest of the world, including us in that rest of the world, were unable to do so? If a child would work in Serbia at the age of 12, his or her parents would be, would be accused of child exploitation. Such a child would be placed in a, in a, in a, in a foster home or, a, or a, how do you call that, a center for, for, for caring for uh, children who have no parents, and their parents would be arrested and tried, you see. So we didn't have all those various benefits that you did have in the Anglo-Saxon world. Some of you, even with all your spouses, are always telling us about your wonderful marriages. That's beautiful, and I, I, we are all, we all uh, are very happy that you're happily married. But nevertheless, be careful. Your spouses, converted or unconverted, your marriages cannot be, come before God. But you may allow them to come before God because the American society in particular is, uh, is always forcing this family, 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 family values. Nothing wrong with family values. But when the family becomes God, then it's something wrong. So keep in mind and be very careful. Your children, yes, they're God's providence. They belong to God now primarily, but they're not your property. They cannot be more important than God. And you cannot be more important to your children than God himself. And your marriages cannot be more important than God and your spouses. When the time, and perhaps if you make a wrong choice, you'll perhaps show lack of faith in God. Because God, God promises to Philadelphians that they'll be protected. They'll be protected, he says, from the, from, from the uh, hour of trial, as if I remember correctly what it says, that is coming upon the whole world. Look, Revelation 3.10, please, and keep in mind. The hour of trial, because you have kept the word of my patience or endurance, Revelation 3.10, I also will keep you from the hour of temptation, which, read, shall come upon all the world to try them, meaning all of them that dwell upon the earth, those who stay behind, all the inhabitants of the earth. Of the earth. Laodiceans, of course, included, but all the inhabitants will be tried. And those who will be in the place of safety will be indeed tormented by various horrible view, uh, news and stuff that they'll be hearing, but we have to endure, we have to pray to God that, you know, and, and understand it's still a short while and we have to live by faith, not by sight. So make sure, to be careful that you do not make your children your marriages, your spouse is more important than God, number one. And by them you will be showing lack of faith, I would say. Secondly, brethren, some of you didn't have to really give up so much for the sake of God because your societies indeed do guarantee freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom of everything. But perhaps down the road, very soon, you may face some tough choices. And you may have to give up who knows what for the sake of following God or just show disrespect or show disloyalty to him. And number three, be prepared. You cannot help anyone. The best help you can provide for your underage children, yourself, is that you be a of Philadelphia spirit. That's it. Staying behind is not going to resolve anything. It can even make things worse. That's much that I wanted to share with you because I felt this is and the Serbian congregation also prompted me to share this with you because primarily of this wrong notion that we'll be having unconverted people in the place of safety. Somebody said it, it doesn't matter who. We'll be having, somebody made a comment like that. I, To be honest with you, I just missed that comment, but others heard it. And they were very greatly kind of puzzled and disturbed. There was a comment that, you know, we'll have unconverted people in the place of safety that we are be, we'll be teaching and working with them and giving them example. No, Brandon, we won't. So I just wanted to elaborate a little bit on all of this so that you'll be very clear. So now, please, I'm giving my, giving, giving words over. My cousin Sean wants to address you and tell you something again. We're telling you all this from our Serbian experience. We're not telling you any fairy tales. We're telling you things as they are, reality. Uh, yeah, I'll just say that uh, we, my cousin, uh, uh, talked uh, about a few weeks ago about uh, the Holocaust, where, where in some uh, Jewish shtetl, uh, Jews had some uh, chance to flee out uh, from that uh, shtetl village, uh, 
because somebody somebody uh, from that village uh, told them that the German army uh, is ready to get in that village to enter in that village and kill all of them and take uh, all of their gold richness everything and they made the uh, that mistake about family they they, they they were like no we should stay with our families we should stay with our uh, labor shops with our stores to save it from that army even if we lo- uh, lose our lives and they lost their lives they, lo- they lost everything they had even their, their children spouses and, and, and everything similar thing uh, happened to Serbs, but we we weren't so stubborn as we as we were like occupied from all sides, and uh, there was in the independent state of Croatia, like uh, uh, as we speak about separating uh, ch- uh, children from their families, uh, Croats as uh, one more uh, nation which is unfortunately Slavic nation, but it is still nation in Europe, European Union, uh, which is uh, now part of European army uh, and plan of European army. Uh, they did uh, such a horrible things to uh, people when they separated their, them from their families, uh, concentration camps just for children, just for women, and for women and children. Uh, so in those situations, Serbs uh, didn't have uh, so much choice. So many of them uh, were like uh, uh, had in mind to uh, flee away from that uh, from that concentrating uh, camps. For example, Yasinovac. In our movie data from Yasinovac, we saw some sim where uh, some men uh, during all the movie during all that happenings just uh, think about how to flee how to go out from that concentrating ha- camps that would be situation in USA in all English Commonwealth and in that uh, occupied modern Israelitish uh, nations so be prepared for that Anyone else? I cannot find what I'm looking for. So well, while you're looking, mm-hmm. what you're looking, I would like to say just a couple of words. So this is, uh, I was the one who heard that, and uh, just uh, uh, to me, if that was all true, uh, I for myself knew in the scriptures that the wings were given to the church, and not to anyone else who might come to the city square and apply to go to the place of safety, you know, just because they like it so. And uh, then I thought that it uh, renders meaningless our keeping of anything if unconverted people can go to the place of safety as well. So why should we keep anything? Why should we keep? Why should we fast and pray and anything? Because then unconverted people who never fasted, prayed, kept the day of atonement, uh, uh, made the uh, uh, let's say uh, left uh, many things from this world or uh, many of those they li- liked loved friends, family sports uh, fun on the Sabbath um, uh, much of the fun of this world is done exactly on Saturday so we left that all and then you end up in the same place of safety with someone who just didn't have to give up uh, on any of those pleasures and then I told Sasha, well, if that's the case, why should we keep anything, you know? If, if, if we will, uh, you know, go together with them in any case. So, uh, okay, then if it's exceptions, and exceptions based on children, and if it's exceptions based on, uh, based on uh, someone's spouse uh, being willing to come and willing to respect uh, uh, God's uh, God's law, let's say, okay, but that was my doubt, and I posed that as a question 
to Sasha last week or two weeks ago. So that's that's the reason why we have to listen to all of this as far as the place of safety is concerned. And as far as what's coming on, uh, you know, what's coming on your your world very soon, uh, well, I, I always keep in mind the, the horrible imageries of uh, uh, September the 11th, uh, the attacks which left pretty much the entire wo- world in disbelief. You because you thought that America is invincible, and us because we thought that America is, was invincible. So uh, that was a shock, and it was only two or three buildings. Well, after after that, they demolished uh, some because they were damaged also. But basically, let's say if it's only ten or twenty buildings, that's nothing compared to what's written in Ezekiel that uh, that your uh, towns and cities will be just raised to the ground, basically dug out or whatever the wording is. So. Um, uh, I know that we all know this theoretically, and we can never be too uh, ready and prepared for that. Because you know, I still sometimes play those uh, those videos and look how those towers just collapsed, you know, into into nothing, just uh, tons and tons of dust. And uh, but uh, at least uh, I don't know. Maybe we can just appreciate the fact that it's coming and somehow be uh, uh, ready for that, because that's going to be a shock to us uh, equally as to you, but we are outside of it, thankfully, uh, and we found in... Um, and that's why we keep telling this to you, because we were in the midst of many things, because the Balkans is the place of war, you know. In the 20th century, we had two, Bal- uh, f- uh, two Balkan wars, we had crisis with the Austro-Hungarian Empire before that. We had World War One. We had typhus uh, uh, in the World War One. We had uh, our popu- main population decimated in World War One, and then we had uh, like uh, World War Two. Then we had crisis, Tito-Stalin split uh, in 1948, and it was always, you know, it was always wars or, or rumors or threats of wars here in the Balkans. Then we had NATO bombing in 1999. And then some people, when that 9-11 happened uh, just about two years after uh, after uh, uh, the NATO intervention, which was sponsored by mo- mostly by America, Germany, Britain, France, and so on, to be executed on, on our country, uh, Many people here said we're, we're sorry for the innocent people, but as for the American polit- uh, foreign policy and politics, they deserve it. Uh, they deserve to see it for once, for uh, on their soil, what it looks like when you're being bombed, when you're being destroyed, when you're being raised to the ground, and when innocent people suffer because of it. And we saw it only two years before that, we had seen that, and we were quite, uh, still quite angry, and many people were triumphant over what was going on. Uh, we in the church were not, we were shocked, we, we thought that, you know, the end was maybe imminent, because this looked very scary, who could have imagined that, but maybe God has prolonged this. Maybe that would just have escalated at that point, that back in that 2001, and the winter was looming on the horizon, mind you, it was September. And you know that New York is not very hot in September, it was like some kind of spring or fall, uh, fall time weather, some, somewhere in the middle, nice sunny day. But you know, after that, October and November comes, you know better than I am. Then, then I know what's, what the conditions are over there, you know. So what do you do in the middle of winter in the town which was raised to the ground? And uh, there, a NATO bombing in Serbia started, thankfully, in March. So that was just a couple of more days that we had to heat our places, and then it was warm enough, so we, we didn't have to, because otherwise we would have frozen to death. We were left without electricity for maybe 20 hours a day. So when, when finally it comes, we finally rush to, you know, use all appliances possible to, you know, to cook something, 
to, to, to do whatever we can in those four hours until it disappears again. And thankfully it was not winter. We would have frozen to death on minus 10 or minus 5 or, or whatever. So um, that didn't happen to you back in 2001 and uh, God obviously had a different purpose. We were thinking back then, some of us were thinking that the world would end by 2010. But we had some, uh, let's say, grace period of another, let's say, 20 plus years or so, we think. So basically that's, uh, that's uh, you know, that imagery always uh, brings me back to what might happen, to, uh, happen, and that's going to be much, much worse than that. So that's that was that's what I wanted to share. Mm. When it comes to what I was looking for, it was about the uh, children of of Amman and what they are to have in the in the great tribulation, as it was said that they will be spared for three years only. We know that the tribulation itself lasts for three and a half years. So even them that were that would. Uh, basically hide people that are, in, that are in the church they won't be doing it for the entire time so even those who are around you and not against you would suffer some kind of a serious penalty for their rebellion then again I wanted to comment because some people say yes in the place of safety there, there will be unconverted as Sasha said that those will be individuals and everyone around you that is just, what's the word, refugee, is going to suffer some kind of trouble, basically, probably getting killed in the end. So, no, there is no place to hide. And when you look for things that happened here, it was much more tame on the Western Front in the Second World War than it was on the, on the Eastern one. So you could basically search the encyclopedias and look for the for the magnitude of destruction in the Eastern Front, and that will be something more visual and graphic for you to understand what's go what is going to happen. And it is something that always freaks me out. That's what I wanted to say. That's all. So thank you for your attention. And just in closing. Remember what Gerald Walter House used to say and Mr. Armstrong. It was, he says, that will be the last training phase for the church. Not for the world, not for the unconverted brethren. In the place of safety will be the training, the last final training for the church. The converted people, people of God. So I hope with all these clarifications and some graphic descriptions of what is in store for the world... I hope that you'll make the good and the right choice when the right time comes. And that in the meantime, we need to dispel all these possibly false notions and ideas that we might have. We might have them out of good intentions, I do know. But yes, there is one saying that you have in English that the uh, road to hell is paved with good intentions. So uh, let's keep in mind what the Bible teaches and what is the what are the intentions of God rather than our own Good intentions. Thank you for your uh, attention to all these important matters.